Okay, so we're going to review this Kenwood DNX5190. Now this piece, in my opinion, is Kenwood's middle-of-the-road unit. Um, aside from their Kenwood Exelon series, which is in a league of its own, that would be their super high-end, uh, top-of-the-line, so spare no expense, best of everything. And of course they have their step-down or their flagship in their Kenwood series, which is always going to have a 7-inch monitor. Always. Okay, now this one, in my opinion, would probably be the one that they would sell the most. Just given the way that the world is and how poor people are in general uh, because they lost their 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 pants <laughs> and give it a couple even years out there so the 51 series in my opinion is going to be the killer this year this one stacks up really well very aggressively against everything else that I've seen tested um, whether I've reviewed it or not anything that I know that I can pretty much get my hands on and sell if I was going to sell a middle of the road you know units going to have DVD and GPS this would definitely be in my soundboard. Kenwood, definitely for sure. Um, not just because, you know, they're paired up with JVC as a company as a whole. Um, and if anybody, if you watch my videos, um, if you don't, what the hell, why aren't you watching my videos? But, um, you know, Kenwood, I like. I'm starting to notice that a lot of the tooling from JVC is beginning to carry over into the Kenwood. Not so much the other way around, but I'm very delighted to see that. And in this unit, it's very smooth. The interface is really, really good, actually. Um, the touchscreen is much more, you know, nimble as opposed to some of the other units I've tested, like the Pioneers are just, ugh, I mean, just terrible. You know, and there's some other ones out there that, that are all show and no-go. Very hard to control. This one, not the case. As with any Kenwood, Kenwood is the only brand out there that utilizes Garmin as their vehicle or mobile GPS system. That's what you're getting when you when you turn it on, use it for the navigation. So that's a big plus. Me personally, whenever I utilize uh, GPS, whether it be in my car, I mean, I do like I said, I do big JVC fan. I do have the top of the line JVC in my own car. Not that that should sway you or you know I don't even know why I even bring it up. This is a Kenwood review. Um, but you know, for me, Navtech software and Garmin software, I personally prefer in a lot of instances to use Garmin software. Um, I also like to use it when it's also coupled with the TMC or the traffic network, which this unit by default does not come equipped with. I, I just really find Garmin to be a very friendly to, and easy to use, almost idiot proof type of GPS. It's very stable, very reliable. The maps are very readily, easily uh, updatable. I've always had very good experience with it in marine and vehicle. I like it. So, I mean, Garmin kind of sells itself. Anybody who's been around or had a couple GPSs here and there, You've seen it. I mean, who hasn't? I mean, it's just, it's a great, it's a great GPS system. Now, the disc is a slot load. This is not a, a fully motorized type of screen, so you're not going to, you know, have the luxury of being able to disguise or hide the, the CD slot, which does take up some of the room. This is a 6.1 inch screen, which is a good, respectable size. They do have this rotary knob right there. Decent graphics, also a nice colored wall bound, well, wallpaper background there. The illumination colors are also customizable so this will definitely match any vehicle that you could ever throw it into. Another cool feature, um, it has a front and rear mode zone so that way you could have GPS going on, a DVD playing in the front, feeding to the rear and have Sirius going on at the same time. So you could have three zone capability essentially with this unit. Some other things that I think are really cool about it are in the audio department. I've always had a bone to pick about the way Kenwood, you know, has their buttons and their layout to, to tune the system. I am a big tuner guy. I'm very nutty with the buttons, and I like a lot of controls. Um, I've always frowned on that and with, with Kenwood, but they stepped it up. I think they made a good improvement. I don't think that they're there totally to, to my expectations personally, but to most people, I'm sure it's just fine. And I'll get into that in a, mi in a minute. So anyway, this here is your home screen. The big ones are going to be your nav, your disk, and your telephone. I do not have a unit paired, but just for the heck of it, all the stuff you can see is grayed out. Incoming calls, missed calls, outgoing, phone book, call, all your redials and your presets are all here. You can import your phone book. It's very usable. It's always a, always a pleasure to use. It will also do Bluetooth streaming, so if you have a phone or an iPhone or a, an Android, whatever, you could stream all your media right onto here so that's a good thing as well there's a standby screen which no one else has I think that's a pretty nice feature 
I'd like to actually have to see that in my own vehicle. Pandora, right there, that's becoming a very big type of media these days. You can even thumbs up it, thumbs down it, control it from here. Get more information. Always you got your artist playback text work. You have a nice, attractive background. Right now it's going through the demo mode. So it's going to keep flipping through the colors. I'm just going to let it go. There's your rear zone. So if you want to control that, right from there you can do it. Also you got some shortcut buttons, which are nice. There's your setup. So your basic system for your system itself, you could adjust the, the interface, the touch screen, calibrate it, set up a security code, set up memories, things like that right there. Your display, this is your color. So you could set that, turn that on. not really going to go ahead and goof around with it a whole lot. But take my word for it. You can make this just about any color you could ever think of. You can do it. Your sources. Now you can turn these on, turn them off. So that way on the home screen, if there's something that you just do not utilize, you don't use an iPod, you don't use an AB input, or whatever the case is, you could just totally get rid of them so that way it's less clutter on, on your home page. Or your home screen, I should say, in this unit. Rear view camera, dedicated, you can turn it on, turn it off. Straightforward enough. Single RCA audio, I mean, sorry, video input, like most units you would expect. That's what version you're running, so you know. Down the road, you want to update it, you need to know that information. And it's good that they make it. You nav, so you want, when the guidance comes on, you could interrupt the front, just left, right, or both of the fronts. That's a nice feature. Adjust the voice. Typical Jack and Jill. Nav mute. Turn the audio on and off when that happens. And there's your audio video output. Straightforward enough. Turn it on. Turn it off. Now we'll go into some other features. Now back on your home screen. Pandora. I'm going to give that a quick look at. Um, I mean it's very nice. You could use it right here from your phone or you can integrate and control it right from there. Now, um, I'm not going to get to that yet or that yet. I want to show you, I want to touch on the Sirius XM. Now, a lot of people probably haven't warmed up to the idea, but the way it used to be is you used to have the Kenwood interpretation module, kind of like when you had a TV and you had a, um, a cable box. You would need the cable box, which would be the interpretation module and you have like an HDMI cable which should actually feed it. So it was a two part deal to make it work. Uh, Sirius and XM were no different. Um, XM used to be the super expensive piece that no one could ever find for XM but now that since they merged what they've done is they eliminated the need to get the, the um, interpretation piece, the hub and the SCC1 universal tuner which was two pieces usually ran about 120 to 130 bucks not anymore now you just get the V200 it's one plug right into the back of the unit, the data cable, you run your antenna, done. That's all there is to it. And just as a side note, make sure you use the antenna that comes with that V200 because I've learned that the hard way. The old ones are not interchangeable. That's a very important tidbit. It drove me crazy. But it's a good thing. It's a good change. Regular radio tuner, um, no need to really spend a whole heck of a lot of time with this. Um, even though this unit is not HD ready, I mean, I mean, HD radio built into it, I mean, it's very nice. I mean, it gives you some text. I mean, if the stations do transmit in RDS, you're actually going to get all this information, and you get it for free. So that's nice. Like most radios, three bands of six presets, 18 total for FM, six in AM. You know, not a big deal. Not a, not, don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this here. It's a radio. I mean, who really uses that much anyway? Okay, so we'll go there. Watch how nice slides, so nice, right? Very nice. iPod, touch of a button, there you go. Now I want to touch that. Hang on. Okay, 
when it's a video for some reason. No device on the USB. USB is, is blank. Now the same plug that I'm using for my iPod, which is giving me some problem because of my video setting for some reason apparently, um, you would use a jump drive, you would plug it directly into there and you can keep that in as long as you want. You could always have that media readily, readily available to you since this does have a lack of an SD card in the front to keep that extra media stored someplace. Or if you really want to be sneaky, what you could do is you can get a USB expansion module um, kind of like what you would use for a computer because USB universal serial bus does not know the difference whether you're in your home on a computer or in your car stereo on your Kenwood stereo. What the heck is the difference? So if you want to go that route, it works. I've done it and it does work, so there's another little tip for you. The audio video input is just a standard three-way composite audio video left and right and video signal input. That's all that is. Nothing too crazy going on there. Now, I, what I want to do is I really do want to get into the audio settings on this unit because I find that to be probably the most important thing to touch on and the biggest dramatic change that I've noticed in Kenwood. Okay, this looks just like Clarion. It's almost like the same interface. Now, you got volume offset. What that means in English is that you would have, say, your AM FM tuner would be uh, 10 watts and when you switch it to CD for whatever reason the CD might be 7 watts kind of like how a TV is when, when those annoying commercials come on and it's like 50% louder and it drives you insane that feature will uh, essentially allow you to eliminate it your subwoofer level which is built right in there loudness turn it on and off pretty quickly easily to get to is only two, two touches of two buttons to get into it now your EQ very similar but I can definitely notice some differences this they've never had, which are all presets, which I'm not really crazy about. I don't really use them. I'm all about the user presets, and that's my thing. This is what I like, controls. Now, I don't, like I've said before, I don't think that they have it all figured out yet. It's nothing like, you know, how the JVCs are and some other brands where it's just laid out. It's very simple. You have... Anybody can understand 7 to 13 bars that go up and down. Everybody understands. The left one is low frequencies, the middle is mid, and, and, left, and the right is high. It's very straightforward. For whatever reason, Kenwood never really picked up on that, and they've always went this route where they use frequencies. Not everybody understands that 100 hertz is subsonic, and, and mid frequencies are like 600 to, you know, it, they just don't get it. So I'm not a fan of this, but however, they do allow you to do it, so you can go... On your high, say you want 12,000 hertz, you want to emphasize that and bring it up 50%, you know, 15K hertz, 15,000 hertz, you really want that thing to shimmer, you could bring it up. The middle, you know, 1,500 hertz. And then, of course, you know, you have these extra settings. For me, it's a little confusing, and I could definitely see a lot of regular people just not ever messing with this because they just don't, don't understand what Q factors mean and what base DC extension means and that, that that to me is confusing I mean if you know your way around audio systems good for you it's probably not going to be a big deal for you but from but the average guy I see problems you know so I definitely frown on that I don't like it I'm just going to give that iPod one more try. I really want to get this thing displayed for you very much. Okay, app mode, we don't want that. Sorry, for whatever reason, my iPod is just not talking to this thing the way I want it to. So let me just touch on a GPS real quick, and we'll wrap this up. There's your map. Does have 2D, 3D. There I am. It is a draggable map, which is very cool. I like that. Touch of a button, you could change your your view. 
spin it around. If you get lost, if you start goofing around too much, you could do that. And always a quick button back. You could also do a second screen and screen type of situation. So if you had your iPod going on here, you could have that here. You map there, as well as controlling that extra zone at the same time. So that's very cool. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's the meat and potatoes of it. Sorry about that. And, um, you know, if you're looking to spend that mid-range, you know, um, $600, give or take, for a good head unit with DVD and GPS, give a good look at this one unit, this unit right here. I like it. It's a nice piece. The GPS is rock solid. The sound is improved, and it's got a lot of bang for the buck. So check it out. This is the Kenwood DNX 5190.